Should the man be the leader in a relationship? If so, what qualifies as leadership in a relationship as opposed to a work environment? That's what we're going to look at today. The reason this is so important is because what's the goal of a relationship? It's happiness, it's meaning, and it's children. Now, children, they'll happen just through an act of lovemaking, right? I mean, obviously, if we talk about children growing up in a protected environment, happy, healthy, strong children, that requires a little bit more effort. But the primary goal of any relationship is happiness and meaning. How do you achieve that? Through attraction and trust. These are the two core things women need for us at a universal level. Obviously, there's individual needs that have to get met. But at a universal level, she always needs attraction and trust and connection. Whenever there's a conflict in a relationship, it's usually because there's not enough attraction, respect, the masculinity component, or reassurance, trust, and comfort. These are the two big forces that are at work. Now, how are they both created? Through leadership. Now, what does leadership... Now, there's obviously more ways and tools to create attraction and trust that would go too far to, for this particular video here today. But leadership is one of the most fundamental aspects in a relationship. Now, I want to be very clear on what leadership doesn't mean. Leadership does not mean you telling her what she has to do or she cannot do. It does not mean making her your slave. That's not at all what this is about. Because leadership in a work environment means you get to decide what's right. You listen to people's ideas, but ultimately you make the decision. Now, the problem with that in a relationship is if you have the ultimate decision-making power, she will end up entering foul compromises. In other words, she will agree to something that won't really make her happy, and then both people are going to pay for that. Marsha Rosenberg, founder of Nonviolent Communication, said exactly that. If any party in a relationship, the man or the woman, enters a foul compromise, he didn't use the word foul compromise, I'm paraphrasing, but that's basically the idea, then both people will pay for it. So it's not really that you get to make all of the decisions and she just follows what you say, then she's an employee, then she's a slave. That might make you feel good and give your ego a little kick in the moment, but it's horrible for her and it's bad for you as well. Nobody is gonna benefit from that. So, how is, if we look about decision-making, first of all, before we look at what leadership actually is in a relationship, decision-making in a relationship should come from really a meritocracy. Ray Dalio talks about that. Let the best ideas win. Whatever has more merit should win. Now, obviously, who gets to decide in a company what has more merit or not, since we have imperfect data available to ourselves at all times? Ultimately, it's the owners of the company. Now, in a relationship, who is that? Well, you can see it gets kind of difficult. So you should really talk about the idea based on its merits. Let me give you an example. Fernando wants to travel to some country in Europe with her sister. And she wants to stay in some Airbnb. And I say, I would prefer it if you were to stay in a hotel because it's safer. Two girls traveling by themselves. I think it's much safer if she stay in a hotel. Now, if she were to argue with me about this now, then first of all, you have to change the emotional state. Because by the way, if she feels truly attracted to you, if she feels, if there's a lot of attraction and a lot of trust, she won't even feel the need to argue a lot of the times. If she feels the need to argue a lot of the times, either it's because there's a fundamental lack of compatibility, as in she, there's just something wrong with her, or her needs are met in the relationship, attraction and trust. Now, if she were to disagree with me, I would just sit down with her in a very calm and collected manner and I would say, well, look, these are the reasons why I would prefer for you to stay in a hotel as opposed to an Airbnb. Why do you think it would be better to stay in an Airbnb? Okay, and then we can have a logical conversation. Now you might say, women are logical, they're all emotional. Well, they're all, first of all, we are all emotional. Are women more emotional than men? Absolutely, for sure, 100%. But we're all emotional. The reason you have the job you have is because there's emotions involved. Emotions are the invisible force of life, as Tony Robbins says. But coming back to that, first of all, the logic has to be involved. So you have to agree and see, okay, well, yeah, actually makes sense. Because the reason she wants to stay in it, it's never about the thing itself. It's about the real reasons behind it. And if you can meet the need behind the want, if you can meet the needs behind what it's being said, then it's not the Airbnb. She might as well stay in a hotel. Now, if she, now what happens if she says, no, I really still, I've listened to all the arguments, but I still think it's better to stay in an Airbnb. Well, then she can do that. And it wouldn't have much of an impact because I still think it's safe enough given the country that she wants to travel to. No problem. And she ultimately obviously gets to decide that because what if I were to force her to do that? First of all, I can't. I don't have any right. It would be absolutely unethical to do that. And even if she were to then go along with my suggestion, she would end up resenting me. 
there'd be a passive aggressiveness inside of her. It wouldn't be good for her, it wouldn't be good for me. Both people would pay for that. Now, different example, because this one is a benign little thing. What if she were to go ahead and say, I wanna have a lot of male friends. There's this guy, Tommy. You know, I, I think he could become my new male best friend and I wanna meet him for coffee and I wanna go for drinks with him. And she wants to spend one-on-one -on -one time with another man who's not a brother or a father. And let's say she were to insist on that. Do I then get to lock her into the basement, tell her she can't do that? No, obviously not. But it would end the relationship instantaneously because this is just a boundary that I have of mine. So leadership in this case does not mean telling her, oh, well, look, you can't do that. It's saying in my relationship, that won't happen. You're absolutely free to do whatever you want, but this is a deal breaker of mine. Absolutely not. And then I would even encourage you to see, why does she even have that need? If you screened properly, if you qualified properly in the beginning, if you've created a lot of high quality options for yourself with online dating, in-person approaches, you've screened properly, that problem won't even arise. And if she were to randomly start talking about this, then there's an underlying need that isn't being met. So you would have to really look at what the needs are that aren't being met. Because if we talk about decision-making, meritocracy, best ideas. But let me tell you something. If she's emotionally fulfilled, she won't even feel the need to argue about a lot of these things. So that's what it means. Leadership also means understanding, okay, this is how I want things to be done in my relationship. If you want it different, okay, fine. But then we're at an impasse, then we have to walk separate ways. Because remember, the relationship is supposed to serve the people in it, not the other way around. You're not just in the relationship to stay in it because that's what I said 20 years ago. Now I have to suffer for the rest of my fucking life. Absolutely, that's not the case. The relationship is there to make you happy, to make her happy, and to create meaning and stability, family, all of the good things that come with it. But at some point, a lot of people fall prey to the sunk cost fallacy. I've been with her so long, why would I end it now? Well, because if you're 40, 50 years of age, you're gonna live another 40, 50 years. What about your happiness? What is more important than your happiness? So, leadership in a relation, I don't, Beginning, in the beginning, I said, the man has to be the leader in a relationship. But now I'm saying, well, you don't have ultimate decision-making power. Now, how does leadership then manifest itself if you don't have ultimate decision-making power? Well, before I go into that, let me give you one example where I would say the man should have ultimate decision-making power, where martial law is invoked, so to speak, and I just get to decide what's right. I believe the only case where that's okay is where there's imminent danger. Let's say Fernando and I were walking down the street and a guy's coming and then I see a guy on the street, I might just move her over to the other side and then I have to deal with that danger. Or for example, oh, we're in a, diff in a dangerous situation, it's like get in the taxi and I'm just telling her what to do so we can get out of there. In those moments, like how often is that really gonna happen? Hopefully never in your life, right? So that's almost never gonna happen. So you can never really evoke it unless there's a real, real emergency. I can't think of any other example other than immediate physical danger where you have that ultimate decision-making power. Where in that moment you say, get in there. And then again, you can agree beforehand that you say, if a situation, from I have a very clear agreement that if a situation like that were to ever arise, I make the decision in that moment and there's no discussion. Afterwards, we can talk about it. But the most important thing is our physical well-being. So we got to get out of there. So I'll tell you, get in the car, no discussion, let's fuck off, right? That's really the only scenario to, for us, for me to be able to protect us because I believe it's my responsibility as a man to protect us. Now, that responsibility only goes so far as to where I actually have authority. If she decides to put herself in danger, and it becomes too much for me, then I can just end the relationship because I don't want it anymore. But there's also a little bit of an element of having faith, right? But if there's imminent physical danger, and I say, let's get in the fucking car, fuck off, we're leaving, then there's gonna be no discussion in that moment. But again, that's hopefully never really gonna happen, so it doesn't really have that much of a practical impact on your day to day. So what really constitutes leadership in a relationship? Ultimately what it is, is being able to say, let's, taking the initiative, and certainty. If you want to boil down leadership in a relationship, is really certainty. Your ability to say, I will make a way or I'll find a way. Whatever challenge may present itself. It might be her presenting you with a congruence test, a so-called shit test, to see whether you're actually as confident as you present yourself to be, or life giving you a challenge. You can never, as a man, ever put the emotional burden of creating certainty onto her. We as men, 
would love to crawl back into our mama over the course of our lives. We want that certainty. We want somebody to take care of us, to take care of us. Now, the problem is that's our job. It is perfectly fine to ask her for input. I ask Fernanda for input all the time. She's a master's degree from one of the best universities in Brazil. She's extremely smart. So obviously you want to be in a relationship with a lady where you can have an intellectual exchange, where she can contribute to the solution of whatever challenge may present itself, of course. But it's about the emotions. This is what's ultimately gonna destroy attraction and thereby happiness. And it's gonna make her lose respect for you, which is if you place the emotional responsibility of creating certainty on her. You have to bring the certainty. Even if you don't know how to deal with the challenge, you say, okay, you might get angry, you might get stressed, not at her, at the situation. You might get frustrated, that's perfectly fine. You're a man, you're dealing with that challenge, that's okay. But you have to say, no problem, I will solve this. It doesn't matter what's gonna come up, I'll find a way or I'll make a way. The emotional certainty, that's really what leadership is. It's servant leadership, it's not you controlling her, it's saying, no matter what comes up, I will find a way. It's certainty. How do you generate that certainty, that confidence? Out of nothingness, you decide. It's a decision that you make. Now, obviously, there's four sources of confidence. One, it's competence, your ability to solve problems, which you've done in the past. If you need evidence for that, there have been challenges in your lives that, if you've, that you've already successfully overcome, haven't you? So you can look at that, and that can strengthen your competence. Second, use mental and emotional state. In order to be a good leader in a relationship, you have to be in a strong mental and emotional state. We've all had times in our lives where we felt so stressed or overwhelmed that we weren't able to bring that certainty. And then how do women react? They lose respect for us instantaneously. So in order to be a good leader in a relationship, you have to take care of your mental and emotional state, which means working out. Sunlight, I've talked about this at length in other videos. I have a video here on YouTube called Eight Keys for Happiness. Send me DM on Instagram, I can give you some more strategies. Check out Andrew Huberman. Do whatever you have to do to strengthen your mental and emotional state. Even the way you walk. Gunther Schmidt says, even the way we're walking is a neutral. How you're going, that's how it's going. The way you use your body, the way you speak, whether you talk like this, or whether you put certainty behind your voice, that is not just a manifestation of your state, it also reinforces the state. So, to feel certain, to be able to be a good leader, you have to one have competence, which you already have. You just have to remember it. Second state, the third one is beliefs. You have to have an empowering story that you tell yourself. A simple affirmation, I'll make a way or I'll find a way. I'll find a way or I'll make a way. It doesn't matter what happens. For some of you, that's gonna be faith, believing in God. For some of you, it's believing in yourself. For some of you, it's saying, it doesn't matter what happens, I have to find a way to serve the people around me. You have to have beliefs. And if you want to change your beliefs, then you just need one reference experience that proves that you already are the type of man who's able to do that, okay? So just look at what you actually believe about yourself because whether you're going for what you want in a relationship or not, whether you're putting yourself out there in your dating, in your relationship life, you're dating, not in your career, you're going for the promotion, you're starting that new business, whatever it is, it comes down to beliefs, it's mindset. And then the fourth component of certainty is osmosis. Simply by spending time with other men who have that certainty, who have that confidence, who truly live that on a daily basis, that rubs off on you. If you spend time around people who are insecure, complaining, or little bitches, you'll become one. You need to spend time around men who are like that and it will rub off on you. You feel a little bit like that through these videos. I'm trying to encourage you. If I were to sum up my life in one value, the one that my mother has bestowed upon me, it's encouragement. Encouragement means and courage, blah, blah, whatever French word that is, it means it comes from the heart. From my heart to yours, I want to encourage you. So I hope you're feeling a little bit of that here as well. But you need to have that locally. You need to have high quality male friends in, wherever you live. If you travel international global network, that's amazing. But you need to spend time with men in a gym, jujitsu, boxing, business partners that you see on a regular basis every single week. It is absolutely important we outsource our sanity. So that is ultimately what leadership comes down to. Obviously, we can then talk about being able to provide systems and structures for everything to flourish. There is a technical component to it for sure. But then there's also the idea of a vision. As a leader, you have to bring a vision to the relationship. Where are we going with this family? Leading the family doesn't mean I'll tell people what has to happen. Well, you can tell your children what has to happen. Obviously, you, you have decision-making power there for sure. But with your wife, 
it's really together. So you can see it's not just battling her. It's not so much overriding her terrible ideas. Ideally, you find somebody who has already amazing ideas. And if a conflict arises, change her mood, not her mind. Change her mood, not her mind. This is not about debates. In a relationship, you have to decide whether you want to be right or whether you want to be happy. And some of you guys are debaters. And I'd argue or I'd encourage you to stop debating so much and understand that what you have in common is what should drive the dialogue. Ask yourself, in this conversation with my girlfriend, my wife, or a lot of you are still dating, soon to be, or these people, what is my outcome in this relationship? What do I truly want in this situation? And then you realize, well, ultimately it's happiness. So do I really need to make this point or am I just emotionally driven? No. Now, if she's crossing one of your boundaries, communicate that clearly. That's another component of a leader. A leader can radically, honestly, and transparently address what's wrong. He doesn't ignore the weeds that are growing in the garden. He says, there are weeds right here. We have to address them. This is not okay. We have to talk about it in a very clear and concise manner. Firm, yet gentle. Firm, yet gentle. That's really what I want to leave you with. It's the understanding that being a leader does not mean having ultimate decision-making power. Now, in little things, yeah, she wants to be able to follow your lead when you say, let's go to the gym, let's do this. If she's emotionally fulfilled, she's super happy for that to happen. But ultimately what it is, it's certainty. It is using this is the direction we should go into. And if your values are aligned, naturally that's the path you'll walk together. And then you'll have negotiations on eye level because a relationship has to be on eye level. But it is really the case that women love a man who takes the initiative, who says, let's go here. Certainty and persistence. But who's also obviously open-minded and reflect, or reflects upon his own mistakes. You can apologize. You can admit when you are wrong. It is absolutely critical that you have that ability as well, because otherwise you'll become a tyrant. That's not the aim of the game either, right? Because then you'll, yeah, basically start acting in a very harmful way towards her and eventually yourself. But women love it when men say, let's do this, let's do that. Mm, I don't know. Whenever she says, I don't know, then you say, let's do that. If she has a serious counterpoint and she doesn't want to do something, well, then you have a conversation about it. Whenever, here's a little key, whenever she says, I don't know, be, I don't know if we should go to the restaurant. Let's go, babe, it's going to be fun. It's fun and playful. It's loving most of the time. Leadership is this grim thing where you're at war all the time, where you're a wartime general. That's not what a relationship is about most of the time. Most of the time, you can do these things in a very playful and loving way, in, in playful and loving ways rather, that interrupt her pattern if she's caught in a little bit of a, let's say, a pain body attack, as Eckhart Tolle would call it, if the negative thinking has taken over her mind at that moment, probably because her needs weren't met. You can interrupt her pattern in a very fun and loving way. But understand, women need you to be the leader. Women need you to bring certainty. And then decision-making is made, one, based upon whichever idea has the most amount of merit, and then ultimately whether this decision, short-term, medium, long-term, is going to meet your needs and or hers. Because if you're going to pursue any path with her, it has to meet both of your needs. Because the reason people cheat, now some people are just chronological cheaters and she'll cheat no matter what, so you'll have to get really good at reading those signs, but ultimately, the reason people cheat in relationships is because their needs aren't met. If you can fill her up, if you can fulfill her and make her so happy, there'll be no reason for her to go anywhere else because she has everything she wants. If you've screened, if you've qualified properly. Because remember, the number one criteria for success in a relationship is selection. I hope that was useful. If you want me to help you personally, find the right girlfriend, life partner, or wife, apply for a free initial consultation call. Looking forward to seeing you soon. Take care.